Hey everyone, my name is Dave Nixon and welcome back to another episode of the Peak and Flow podcast. This podcast is part of the BossFit 30 program. Today, I'm going to be talking about this concept of becoming BossFit. Uh, or really, another way to consider it is being the life athlete. And so it's a bit of background on this. I it's Actually, I wrote about it firstly in my book, Mining Yourself, where I painted out this idea of what I referred to at the time called a health IQ map. And yes, the name of it is exceptionally unsexy. Um, so I really want to improve my health IQ using this map. However, it was the easiest way that I could try and figure out how to explain uh, what I was talking to and teaching to at the time. Uh, that's since evolved and I now call that the life athlete matrix. The life athlete is simply pointing to this concept and idea that people should be an athlete in their lives and each person's lives is different. And the reason being is because they've got different life goals and they play different life games. And so the question here is what games you want to play in your life? And then where on this matrix do you need to be to be able to play those games continually and at a level that keeps you engaged? That's the whole idea of the life athlete and the life athlete matrix. Really, the term boss fit is more about uh, it just being a more attractive name. That is actually it. But it is still true, especially when we look at the word boss, is actually derived from the Dutch word bass, which means master. It's to master your mind and master your body. Hence, our approach of calm mind, strong body. So that's the background of this idea of becoming boss fit or being boss fit and becoming a life athlete is really about having a calm mind, strong body for good so you can participate in life the way that you want to. That's the foundation and in a way that you can continue for years to come. The whole idea that you uh, you own, don't loan, all of that sort of stuff. And so there is definitely this element when we look at boss fit that is, and it's, it's interesting because I actually own the social media pages um, and the IP to boss fit as well as the trademarks. And what they really are about initially before I got my hands on them were about celebrating all things boss within the world of fitness and, and lifestyle. And I still align with that. It's This whole platform still aligns with that. The whole model still aligns with that. It's looking at the absolute peak of the human body and mind and exploring the edges. Ultimately, this is about exploring your edges. That's what, what this is about. It's just that you get to decide what like how you want to do it. If you're exploring edges of what's fundamentally possible, but it's not aligned to what's meaningful, then that's where it gets mi- mix, um, mixed up. It's where it gets mistaken. So what's meaningful for you? And then how do you explore those edges in both mind and body and beyond? Cool. That's a little background for you in relation to boss fit, life athlete, calm mind, strong body. And so the way that we approach that is a couple of different avenues, I guess, or who we speak to more than anything. And and people usually come at this from two places. They usually come at this, um, and it's subjective because it's going to be different, but either from a place of they're good, but not great. Now, what I'm really saying is good, not great, is this person might be phenomenal in a certain area, but they know that they have more. So that not part, it should be good gap great. Because what we're looking at there is what's the gap? That's what I'm interested in. What is getting in the way of that gap to greatness for you? That's where all of the juice and the leverage is, right? When you're 90% done, because you're 90% good, that next 10%, you're halfway there. You've still got all this work to do, but that 10% is like paramount for greatness. And so it's for those individuals, and I've worked with like professional sports people all around the world, some really high level CEOs all around the world. And it's interesting where for them, their their perception of good could be completely materially and also like day-to-day life different than someone else that's like, yeah, it's pretty good. So it is a bit subjective, but it's literally tapping into this idea that if you know that you have more there and you're not quite something's oh, getting in the way, that's the good, not great concept. Yet, good, not great yet. And the other one is you've got results, but never really kept them. So if either one of those sound like you, you know there's a voice in the back of your head knowing you can do more. You're just not sure what you need to clear in order to get there. Or if you've got results in the past, you've done the work in the past, but you kind of feel like you're back to square one. There's a couple of key principles that we look at when working with these whole idea for those two individuals to become boss fit. One is you get to earn what you learn. 
education and continual education of self of how we think and how others think and how we communicate and how we relate and our body and exploring its edges at ages 20 to 30 to 40 and beyond is you earn what you learn so you get to earn and keep what you learn no one can take that away from you when we put that onus onto someone else and make them do our homework and we just simply do the exercise then we don't get to keep those results we're loaning them and one of the key differences between people that go down this path and the other ones that don't is the ones that do aren't looking for the safest route. It sounds counterintuitive. They're not looking for the safe, protective, don't want to hurt myself. They're just like, I'm, I'm going to risk going down the wrong path. I'm going to risk losing. I'm going to risk you know, even getting a couple of niggles. I'm going to push myself a little bit. I'm going to make some changes, even if, I'm, even if it's not the most efficient way to start off with because a lot of people get stuck by going i don't know what's the best way so i won't do any that that's the wrong way there isn't a wrong way besides that way because we want to be able to make decisions even if you go down the wrong path and you make decisions and ultimately they're not the 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 right path you've you've gone further than the person that never did the person that's waiting for the right path to just arise or arrive or tap them on the shoulder or whatever so you've got to be prepared to to lose and cop a couple of jabs to the face right punching jabs <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> The other is there has to be a shift in perspective. Our reality, our, our outer reality is fundamentally a reflection of our inner reality. We don't get what we want. We get what we feel we deserve. So something has to shift on the inside. There has to be a, a shift of perspective. And the beautiful thing about this is that when our perspective expands, you can't shrink it again. When your understanding, your knowledge, your awareness expands, you can't shrink it. You might go through waves of stress up and down, but ultimately you cannot shrink it again. So your 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 perspective must shift and evolve because what got you here won't get you there. The last part, like the last principle to lean on here is you want to be working on behalf of possibility and potential, not on behalf of deficit. And so it's common for individuals to go, I want to lose weight or I want to train as hard as I can. I want to change my life because I'm not good enough. Here's the shift. It's learning to go, I am good enough. That's why I deserve to go down this path, right? And it's not about trying to trick ourselves into thinking we're good enough. It's about fundamentally knowing that we are. There's a, there's a lot to that, but it is a fundamental shift that, that like it's like saying to you, the listener, um, you complete me compared to me saying i'm complete and i choose you right there is that that love in inverted commas is coming from two very different places and so this is the same thing with here it's like i'm complete and i'm i want to find out what my potential is or i'm not good enough so i'm going to find out what my potential is now one of the challenges is that second one can drive a lot of fear and that fear could actually drive a lot of results and people then have fear that that if they lose that that they'll lose all their results and it's not true um there is some bumps along the way but ultimately you get to go further than if you were just letting fear drive you your whole life your whole one precious life if the fear was driving you there comes a day where you meet the maker all right so how do we go about this well first with mind there's a fundamental like protocol here you need to question your beliefs your beliefs and your values shape your worldview and so the thing about them is that they're just thoughts that we value and people go, well, they're my beliefs. It's like, well, have you? Ha- have I- I've always had them. It's like, well, since when? Six, nine? Were you fourteen? Have you had some when you're in your twenties that you got rid of that you didn't really realize you got rid of? My guess is yes. They're thoughts. You can change your beliefs. You can change your values. The question that Carl Jung posted was not on social media. I don't think he ever was. Is this idea of do people have ideas or do ideas have people? And it is a fundamental question. Do you have your values and beliefs or do your beliefs and values have you? Are they driving you? Because if they are, you don't have them, they have you. And so question your beliefs, audit your values. From there, what could be a new perspective? What could be a new way to look at this? What could I be missing in this situation? How could I look at this situation? What belief could I take on? What would be a resourceful way to deal with this situation? Start asking questions. Resourceful fucking questions and you will realize that you are literally a very resourceful individual. So questions are what's going to unlock your ability to change your perspective. Here's a big one. Social. I highly recommend that you audit your circles. 
right? Your friendship circles. Doesn't mean to get rid of your friends. It means that if you're wanting to get a different result in life, and whether that be with money or career or finances or education, look at the people that you're spending your most time with and going, am I actually getting, like are these any of these people are the kind of people that I want? Right? Do they have what I want? And if the answer is no, then it's how do I get around the people that have what I want so I can learn how they do it? Because there's, there's going to be a strategy of sorts. There's going to be a, a, a formula that you can find out. But you've got to get around those individuals. And let me tell you this, and I had to learn it, pay if you have to. Absolutely pay if you have to. If you've got to, you know, for me in business, if I had goals to improve my business acumen and learn more in that, and then I was just trying to read books and not spend time with business people, or if I pay a chunk of money and spend time with people that I look up to and know more than me in that area, that money is going to come back tenfold. I am saving time and I'm getting around a network. It is exactly the same. You don't have to pay, but be prepared to pay if you have to, to get into the circles that are going to allow you to change your perspective and ultimately change your life. It is usually the cheapest way to do it. From there as well, there's a body. I've said this a few times, explore your edges. Shut your mind up and learn to trust your body. You've got to go in, right? Lose your mind, come to your senses, see what you can feel. Every single time you train and move and exercise, you have an opportunity to deepen your kinesthetic awareness and kinesthetic knowledge and kinesthetic intelligence. Do that. If you're wanting to become boss fit, you need to start exploring your edges. And if you're not sure what I mean by exploring your edges, I mean just pushing your, stretching yourself, pushing your potential. Stretch, don't break. Very important. If you continue to go down and follow these rules, follow this pathway, you will really start to own your fitness. You will absolutely start to own your mind and you will absolutely start to live without the limits that you once had because they will start to come to the front of your mind. You will start to understand them and see them and realize that they're just thoughts. They are not truths. And that is how we fundamentally change our perspective. And that is how we fundamentally become boss fit. And on that note, team, I'm done. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also enjoy this episode. You can find out more about the Boss Fit 30 program in the notes below. Uh, you can learn more about my book and the programs that we run. Otherwise, that's it. That's me done. I'm out. Until next time, peace and pizza. I'll see you soon.